And, yeah, that's pretty much how the game ends. I'm not kidding you. It, it leaves you with that cliffhanger there. Yeah! Anyway, it's about time to explain the ending during the credits here. I was going to show the little comic strip things after the credits and explain the game's story to the best of my knowledge then, but when I looked at them like ahead of time, I seen that in total they were like an hour long, and there's no gameplay. So it's basically one big cutscene, and I don't really have anything to commentate about it. So that's why I'll explain it here. Now, these are just theories I came up with, so I may make mistakes, or, you know, a big mistake, because, you know, I'm just trying to figure this stuff out on my own. Uh, then at some crazed, overly serious Dead Space Extraction fanboy, or Dead Space fanboy, or something will come around, call me stupid, give me the middle finger, and then correct me. <clears throat> so, I thought that I would set up that little disclaimer first to pick fun at the overreacting serious fanboys. And basically to say that I'm a Dead Space noob. Uh, this is the only one I've played in the entire series. But anyway, I'm going to try to make this explanation as brief as possible. But that might not be possible because this game has a pretty large backstory. Anyway, there's a virus that changes people into necromorphs. Originally, you can only turn dead people into necromorphs. You know, it could only change dead flesh and organs and stuff like that into necromorphs. But evidently the virus mutated into a form that can change the living into the dead. That's why we were checked for an infection in that one chapter. I think it was number five. Um, a scientist examining the virus had poor hygiene when he did, so he got some of his dead skin cells in with the virus. I think that I think we found that out in chapter nine on that little message log. So it got so it kept growing and mutating from there into other things and creatures, and that's why it's everywhere, because it just keeps growing. And it was also described as raw meat, and is really bloody when you cut it. That's why I get the impression that it's like mutated human skin. Basically, human dead skin, whatever. Um, that virus, as far as I can tell, is indeed all that gooey stuff stuck everywhere. But I could be wrong, it could just be mutated cells. So, wait, I, I said that already, never mind. Um, there are actually two markers. There's a black one, which is on Earth, and a red one, which is the one that we found at the excavation site. The black one was evidently made long, long ago to put the virus itself, that people knew about it and made that marker, to put the virus into a dormant state and somehow put thoughts and visions into the living beings that are around it or come into contact with it to help eradicate it even to the point of insanity. Some of those thoughts were, after death, will life be freed or begin anew or something like that, and, which some people took to extremes and killed themselves thinking they would be freed or the people simply went insane from the marker. Uh, but the marker was probably just telling the people about the virus to get them to stop it. But that's, that's what I basically got out of the story, of what I understand. The red one was actually reverse engineered and built to be like the black one, but a more powerful one. Oh, that's the end of it right there, uh, but I'll keep explaining it here. But it's unstable, so in turn it was buried because no one could handle the effects of it forever. Basically, you know, the red one. It was also thought that the red marker, when excavated, had a mind of its own because, like the black one, knew how to manipulate people's thoughts. So it's possible when it was being excavated, it may have emitted that signal to, to defend itself from being pulled from its place, you know, its resting place. Like an artificial intelligence or something. In turn, the marker caused all the humans around it to go insane and kill themselves, like, to kind of protect itself. Uh, one of the things that seem to get implemented into people's minds so that after death their life will begin anew again as I said like the black marker and, and better but since it's more powerful than the, the original marker its effects of insanity came a lot quicker as seen in the first chapter where within 10 minutes of activating that marker the character I play, played as was Sam killed the majority of the crew and a lot of other people just flat out committed suicide under the effects of the marker so both markers basically are 
will make you insane if you're around them. That they are the the space around the markers is oh shoot <laughs> the communication with the Wii remote has been interrupted. Dang it! The marker is basically the space around it is called the dead space. I believe that's where the name came from. Um, the markings on the markers themselves, as you've seen in visions and stuff like that, uh, are DNA markings. That or that's what they're saying. Uh, as far as I can tell, they are the virus's DNA that are marked on those markers. I would guess it's to, a code to counter the virus's code or something like that. And uh, both both these markers were thought to be newly discovered because people didn't know they were built long ago. So, like, somewhere 400 years ago, the red one was built. I don't know when the, the black one was built, though. Uh, but that's why we unknowingly excavated the unstable red one. Um, unitology itself is basically a religion formed when people come in close proximity to the black marker on Earth. Uh, then people have visions and feelings of thoughts of doing some stuff caused by the marker, as I explained before. Uh, they thought it wasn't of an otherworldly presence, basically. You know, like some sort of god. Because there was proof of a presence that people could feel, Unitology was the fastest growing religion in the world. Now, what I believe is that at that excavation site, there was a... Um, the, the people running that were Unitologists. So they were... Uh, they found that marker, and they were looking for one because it was a part of their religion, so they wanted to keep experience that. That's why we were looking for it, but we had no idea what effects of that marker had, basically. Um, see these comics? That Those are the things that I was talking about. You unlock these throughout part, parts of the story. And uh, challenge mode is another thing that I'm not going to be showing because it's kind of lame-o. Um, it's just like an arcade shooter. It's just like that last stage in the, the, the chapter, the last chapter in the game, basically. Except, because you know, it just keep enemies coming after you, except you play for points. And you play at different areas of the game, indicated by the chapter number. So, as I said, it's kind of lame in that way because it, the, the whole atmosphere and environment is just shot because in, instead of dreading what's coming next you know from the game's storyline just like making you nervous and stuff like that it's just like come on let there be more I want more points basically like that you get the idea and anyway I'll, I'm just gonna continue through this here and uh, get back to the uh, story here uh, what was I saying before the uh, all about the unitology if you are a person who studies unitology, you are a unitologist. Um, Eggman, I mean, Eggheart, was a unitologist, which he lied about from the start to us, because he had other plans. Eggheart may have simply gone insane, just like the rest of them, from feeling the effects of the marker, which is why he and a lot of others in his religion, after being near the red marker or the black marker or whatever, got thoughts put into his head as well. But that may have, would, I mean, this might have been why he was looking for Lexine. Yeah, he was looking for Lexine, in case you couldn't tell. Um, for some reason, as far as I can tell, Lexine is completely immune to the marker's effects. And when she's around other people, she also nullifies the hallucinations, dementia, and effects the markers that, uh, that give other people the effects of the marker, basically. So, when she's around other people, no one else feels the effects of the marker either. So, she's literally some sort of special person. Uh, I I don't know what makes her special, but she, she was indicated to be more special than others because she has, like, those headaches and nosebleeds and stuff like that, which the game was implying as, like, part of the story that she was turning into a necromor necromorph, excuse me. But that's not the case. She she can actually just simply resist the effects of the marker because evidently her brain waves are like really all over the place and are really racing and stuff like that so I guess she has her own problems in a way with that but I, I would definitely rather have that than be affected by the marker um that's why you'll notice at various points in the story when we split up from Lexine that uh, when you are away from her 
you'll start to feel the effects of the marker again. That's why when we were in the sewers and Alexine was away from us, we started hearing voices. Me, Weller, well, I should say McNeil, Weller, and Egghart were all hearing voices in that sewer area and stuff like that. And uh, you'll also notice that uh, Egghart exhibited concern over her well-being at times. Like, that, like when she, or I should say, when we thought she was gonna or she was killed by those little critters and was pulled into the sewage system or whatever like that. You'll notice that both McNeil and Eckhart jumped in the water looking for her, and when we couldn't find her, Eckhart seemed really, really distressed about that, thinking that she died in the attack, and that would basically be his last hope, you know, of trying to get her back with him and stop his insanity, you know, his progression of insanity, as well as others. So, since it was for him and others, I guess he wasn't that bad after all. Um, maybe. <laughs> the reason why I say that is because he could have told us from the very start that he knew Lexine was the one and, and she could have helped others, but he didn't do that. He, he tried to get her forcefully, and that's not good, but that could have been the effects from the marker, too, so we don't know that. As for uh, McNeil and Weller themselves... Well, they are themselves, really. They didn't hold any secrets back or anything. What what you've seen to them and what they said is their backstory. And that's pretty much all that I understand of this story. There's one thing that uh, you probably didn't notice and a lot of people didn't notice is that uh, after the credits and after you unlock all the chapters and stuff like that, actually you could take a look at this after when, when you start chapter 10, if you take the first letter of each chapter and put them all together in order, it'll spell W A R R E N Warren L I E S Lies. Yes, it actually spells Warren lies. So the game tells you ahead of time that Warren lies through these, uh, uh, through the uh, first letter of each chapter. But of course, it's it's not explicitly said until like until you can figure it out after like chapter eight, if you even notice that. But yeah, someone uh, learned about that, and I heard about that. And uh, sure enough, first letter of each chapter is it, it explains that Warren lied to us. Yeah, that's Egghart, by the way. Uh, so that about does it for this walkthrough. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Oh, I forgot. The, the, you can do the challenge mode chapters here. Uh, there's ten of them for you to do, if I'm not mistaken. Um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep, ten of them for you to do. It's just basically a rail shooter, pretty lame -o. Uh well, No, I shouldn't say a lame shooter. It's a shooter for points. And then over here is the bonus materials. You can look at these credits. Not, oh, did I just say credits? Uh, you can look at these comics here, and this will explain more about the game story. These are the things that I said if I went through all of them, it would take like an hour to do. Yeah. And uh, now you can just check the uh, uh, credits down here and stuff like that. Or, oh wait, maybe we were maybe we were able to do that before. Excuse me. But whatever. I'm I'm rambling on as usual. This walkthrough is done. I hope you enjoyed. As I said. And I'll see you in the next one.